Hello, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this Rhino tutorial I'll be giving you a quick overview of the V5 user interface. First off, you have four default viewports perspective, top, front, and right. The perspective view has a lens length and this is adjusted in the properties panel. To navigate the perspective view, right mouse button and drag to tumble. Hold down the control key and right mouse button and drag to zoom or hold down the shift key and right mouse button and drag to pan. For your ortho views you can simply right mouse button and drag to pan or hold down the control key and right mouse button and drag to zoom. You can zoom with the scroll wheel in all four viewports as well. Up top here you have toolbar groups and each toolbar group has a name tab and you can left click on those different name tabs to change which one is displayed. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse to cycle through these. You'll notice that the left side of the screen changes with some of these toolbar groups and this area is known as the sidebar. The sidebar can be customized in the properties for any toolbar group and you can access these properties by right clicking over the name tab, choosing properties, and there you'll see a sidebar drop-down list. You can also right-click in the empty space next to the toolbar groups and here you can choose other toolbars to display. Over on the right side of the screen we have more name tabs but these name tabs correspond to panels and panels will consist of object properties, materials, environments, ground planes, the sun object, or organizational tools such as layer states or named positions. You can display more than the default four panels by right clicking over any panel name tab and choosing what other panels you'd like to display. You can left click and drag any panel name tab to drag it off and have it floating and you can dock it somewhere else in the UI. If you were to close Rhino and reopen the position will be remembered. or you can have them nested together. You can also access additional panels from the Panels drop-down menu at the very top of Rhino. Now one of the default panels for V5 will be called Help and if you're new to 3D modeling and new to Rhino I'd suggest having Help open as you get started. Help will auto-update by default to whatever command you run next. So for instance if I make a box here with the box command the help panel will immediately go to the box page in the help file and give me information about running that command. The display panel will give you a list of display modes for any particular viewport and here you can change how the model looks to you. and each viewport can have its own display mode. Now there are three locations for just about every feature or command in Rhino and these are the icons or buttons in the toolbar groups. The next place that you'll find a lot of commands or features will be the drop-down menus. And if you don't like either one of those options you can simply type in what is known as the command line. And the command line is especially helpful in that it has a feature called autocomplete. So as you type, it shows you everything that Rhino knows or understands with the letters you've typed so far. And this is a great way to figure out if Rhino calls something the same thing that you're calling it. For instance, trimming or splitting or joining. At the very bottom of the UI, you have a list of commands or features here and these are grid snap, ortho, planar, etc. Grid snap will allow you to snap to the graph paper or the grid that you see in any of the viewports. O snap stands for object snaps and this will give you a list of check boxes and these are different types of objects you can snap to when say moving or drawing and you can also display the manipulator object or record history. And that's a very quick overview of the V5 Rhino interface be sure to check tips.rhino3d.com for more. Thanks for watching.